My name is Dr. Adam Michael. I'm one of the staff specialists in emergency medicine here at Bundaberg Hospital and one of the directors of emergency medicine training. When I was a first year medical student, I got to do my first year elective up in one of the emergency departments in, in Brisbane with a consultant and a director who was particularly inspiring for me. I then finished medical school in due course and, and did a range of other jobs in critical care and anaesthetics, intensive care medicine and, and a range of other things as well. But I kept coming back to emergency medicine and uh, eventually decided after doing a range of other things to, um, to do emergency medicine training as a specialist and now, um, now I'm working here in Bundaberg as a, a staff specialist. So emergency medicine is always interesting. You know, your day can change at the drop of a hat. I remember a little while ago, I was doing a standard fast track shift, seeing people with coughs and colds and sprained ankles. And then all of a sudden someone came in in labor and uh, I delivered a baby, you know, your day can change at the drop of a hat. And I really like that. You know, the whole idea of making order out of chaos is really at the heart of emergency medicine. I really enjoy doing that. But also being able to fix things, you know, there's a real satisfaction in having a child come in who's broken their arm at a, sitting at a funny angle and being able to actually fix that and send them home. That's really quite satisfying. I always find that there's something in every shift that's either um, memorable or enjoyable or interesting or um, where you feel like you made a difference. I did most of my training uh, in emergency medicine, including my intern and junior doctor years in regional hospitals. I really enjoyed that. The beauty of training in your junior years in, um, in smaller regional hospitals is that you're not quite as lost in the crowd. You're not sort of at the end of the line, so to speak, behind the senior registrars, the junior registrars, the senior residents, the junior residents, that sort of thing. You're closer to the action, if you like. You're closer to being part of the team. And that brings with it more one-on-one -on -one teaching. It brings with it more uh, procedural opportunities. And I think a more satisfying training experience. When it comes to emergency medicine, specialties really are driven by the tertiary hospitals. If you want to be a hepatobiliary surgeon, you need to be at the PA if you're in Brisbane or in Queensland. Emergency medicine's not like that, of course. You know, you can have any emergency can come through the door of any department in any hospital in the country. And so regional emergency medicine has all the richness and all the variety of tertiary emergency medicine, except it doesn't have all the inpatient subspecialties um, that are there to do um, what the patients need. And so that actually means that, that our trainees get to do more ourselves. We get to do a lot more of the procedures and more of the definitive care while patients are waiting to be admitted or transferred. And I think that just gives a, a better, more rounded experience. We get a, a range of different trainees in terms of emergency medicine registrars and also junior doctors who come through our department. By and large, we get really good feedback about and the training experience that they get within our department. We really enjoy being able to train people both at the bedside in an informal day-to-day -day way, but also having a good, solid, formal education program that people can learn from when they're off the floor. We, we have a really good team here. We have a really good culture, I think, uh, and, and people come away um, having enjoyed the experience and, and feeling like they've learned a lot and, um, and often have a, um, they tell us a better experience than they've had at some of the other hospitals they've worked at. People talk a lot about, you know, the value of going to a tertiary hospital for some of your training. I think that's true, but there's real value in coming to a regional um, uh, hospital for some of your training. Not only is the, the, the richness of the experience there, but there's also the lifestyle benefits as well. Most of our trainees live down at the beach. They do kite surfing or fishing or, or water sports on the weekend. And they, they end up with a, a bunch of stories which they end up taking with them the rest of our lives. A lot of UK docs come over and they've never seen anyone who's got a snake bite, for example. In Bundaberg, you'll have patients who come not with snake bite, but with the snake in a jar just to, um, just to check so the doctor can see what they've been bitten by. Um, you'll see people who've been bitten by sharks, who've stabbed themselves while spearfishing. People have been punched by kangaroos. You know, you will get just some amazing experiences and stories which you will talk about for years to come. I think the sort of community that we have here is just an ideal place to live and to work. The community is, is not just what we have in the town, but also what we have in the hospital. We're a small enough department that everyone knows each other by name. You can develop great relationships and mentoring relationships with your consultants and your DEMTs. The numbers of consultants and registrars that we have are small enough that you don't see a consultant once or twice a year, you see them every week. We still have enough numbers that we expose people to a, a wide and broad range of different consultants 
consultant's way of doing things and so people get that sort of uh, breadth of training experience, but at the same time people know each other. Living in somewhere like Bundaberg or Bagara is great it's, itself. You know, people just have their days off at the beach and, you know, wake up watching the sun rise over the ocean. Come to work, it's only 15 minutes drive, you know, no traffic. And then they get uh, home um, to the beach at the end of the day as well. It's just a, it's a lovely place to live and to work. The actual process of getting into emergency medicine training is actually fairly straightforward, but really emergency medicine is a very dynamic, it's a very interesting specialty. What I'd suggest really is that people don't rush into it as a career. It's better to have a bit more experience under your belt, it's better to have a few um, years after you graduate from medical school, just to get that breadth of experience and a little bit of maturity with your practice, so that when you do your emergency medicine training, you can be better prepared when you come out as a consultant at the other end. To become an emergency physician, you will need to apply for fellowship with the Australasian College of Emergency Medicine. Fellowship is a five-year full-time training pathway consisting of four training stages. The first stage consists of 12 months full-time equivalent training in an adult or mixed emergency department. Both the second and third stages consist of 12 months full-time equivalent each in an emergency department. The fourth stage consists of 12 months, including a minimum of six months full-time equivalent in an emergency department accredited for stage four, and six months full-time equivalent of elective rotation in a stage four approved facility. Within these four stages, trainees must also complete six months full-time equivalent in non-ED, which can be completed any time throughout stages one to three, and six months full-time equivalent in critical care, which can be completed any time throughout stages two to four. Throughout the training program, there are additional requirements in that trainees must complete a minimum of six months in a major referral emergency department and a minimum of 12 months in a non-major referral emergency department. The entry requirements for the emergency medicine training program include having full general medical registration, having citizenship, permanent residency, or the necessary visa to undertake training, having completed postgraduate year two, having completed a six month full-time equivalent placement in one emergency department in PGY2 or above, and this must have been completed within 12 months of your application, having completed at least three eight week placements in disciplines other than emergency medicine, at least one of these placements must have been completed in PGY2 or above. Prospective trainees need to apply for selection into the FASM training program directly through the college. The application information guide, which includes further details on application and selection, can be viewed on the ASIM website. Once selected into the FASM program, registrars can secure an accredited training position either directly through an accredited facility recruitment process or apply for positions through the Queensland Health RMO campaign. One of the other advantages of being in a place like uh, Bundaberg Hospital is that we can get most of your training time done here. It's important to have a breadth of training, but we've now developed it to a stage where you can do almost all of your specialist training in our district between Bundaberg and Harvey Bay. And I think it's really important that we train people locally because they're the consultants of the future and, and that's the workforce that we will, uh, will look to in years to come.